having gone through the EdTech 467 Emerging Web Technologies and Learning course, I've had an opportunity to look at and think about my views on what it means to learn in today's world. I've explored my learning philosophy and over the course of the course I have developed and grown and evolved it. So how does technology affect my learning philosophy? At the start of the course my view on learning philosophy was much simpler. It was that learning occurs when a person is engaged in the act of developing or constructing their understanding of knowledge on a topic. Central to my view is the idea that you have to be actively involved in the construction of your knowledge and understanding. As I look at how my philosophy of learning has evolved, it seemed appropriate that I also demonstrate the construction of my new views that are updated views. So this video explores that as I review what my learning philosophy 2.0 is. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to review a few of the things that we've learned in the course. For example, in the future of thinking, Kathy Davidson and David Theo Goldberg discussed the locations of learning and they commented that learning is occurring and happening online all the time. What are the implications of this? If learning is occurring online all the time, what does this look like? Or what does it mean? To understand this, we explored connectivism and John C. Lee Brown's view that connectivism is a learning model well suited for today's online and connected world. We explored the power wikis can have on learning. We explored the self-directed learning that occurs when people sharing similar interests come together and participate in the construction of new knowledge. I have come to have a better understanding of tech-enhanced learning and how it utilizes self-motivated participation, communication, and how it blends learning styles and places, how people can collaborate or build on the work of others while having rich conversations that provide answers to people's questions. It's clear that technology enhances learning. It's also clear that learning benefits from the social nature of Web 2.0 technology. From the folksonomic organization of knowledge, also known as tagging, to the critical thinking and metacognitive reflections that occur when writing blogs, learners benefit from the freedom and flexibility technology affords, and from the freedom and interactions that happen online with friends, colleagues, and unknown netizens. Communities are built around knowledge, and we are allowed to be both participants and creators in this process. There is one important dimension of learning online that I have come to understand. As I've come to understand it, the style of learning that occurs most often online is androgical. That is, learning that is self-directed. The learner is often responsible for his or her own learning and decides what they will learn and how they'll learn it or how they will engage in their learning. This is in contrast with pedagogical learning, which is typically characterized as instructor-led education, where the teacher takes responsibility for what is taught and how it is learned. In a K-12 school, students often need more guidance and direction in their learning, but it is hoped that a blending of these two styles can be used as appropriate. And with these understandings, I'd like to return to my learning philosophy. Learning occurs when a person is engaged in the act of developing or constructing their understanding or knowledge of a topic. But now with our understanding, we'll expand on that to say that the act of learning should utilize the affordances Web 2.0 collaborative and participatory communities provide it. While recognizing that in an education environment such as a school, that this process of learning should be facilitated by a mentor teacher who will guide the students appropriately, assisting them to find mistakes and discover new directions and possibilities.